Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. The Raila Odinga that Ruto is dealing with in 2023 is not the Raila he knew in 2007, in 2013, and 2017. Unmistakably, Ruto still thinks that this is the same man they were with when the USA forced him to sign a deal with the former president Mwaiki Baki. He still thinks that this is the same man the USA forced to accept defeat in 2013. And maybe he still thinks this is the Raila they were with when the Delaware US Senator Chris Coons came and forced them to shake hands with the Huru Mugai Kenyatta. The way William Ruto is behaving indicates that he feels that this is the same Raila Odinga. But I see certain characters in Raila that shows that Raila has learned from his mistakes. Those who are around him are giving him pressure not to repeat those very mistakes. Because the narrative has always been the same. Rig the elections, bring in the US, force him into a handshake, then life will continue. But it seems to me that Raila has defied all these odds. When Raila called for town hall meetings, at a time when the bipartisan team are supposed to be meeting to iron their differences, I read something. Raila feels that William Samoy Ruto is not serious with these talks. And I think this is because he saw the team that William Ruto unveiled and he knew that William Ruto is not being serious with the impending talks. Dunstan Omari feels the same and is saying that Raila have, has realized that the only language that the government will listen to is mass action because it is also entrenched in the new constitution. And Omari is saying that way back in 1992 there was no way of dealing with government. That is why we had attempted coup. But right now we have been given a chance that when you are disgruntled, we are dissatisfied with the government, you can go to the streets. Listen to Dan Stanumari. Uh, Honorable Chiriot and uh, Honorable Ichung were very clear. Those are the instructions of their boss. And they are not going to budge at anything. Azimio has now realized, or it had already realized before, that the only language government listens is to go to the streets. So, the Azimio going to the Barazas is a clear affirmation that they will not relent on what they want. So then where does that stand? Where does the talk stand then? The, the, the question that uh, you are asking is a very hard question. Mm. The back stops at the government. The back stops at running a government. <clears throat> and any have heard them, and it's very interesting. They are saying this one we cannot discuss, but they are asking, please assist us to govern. So as Mio is saying, then we have no business to assist you to govern. We will make completely this term of yours a failure. Remember, nowadays I don't hear hustler funds. I don't hear projects being done. Slowly, the government is retracting on the many projects that it had launched in, 19, in 2017 again last week. They are saying now we have got to scale down. The language of government... I support the sentiments of Dan Stanumari because I'm one person who has always been questioning one thing. When William Ruto asked Raila Molo Dinga to suspend the demonstrations, I thought they were serious and they wanted to engage on serious talks. But then three things have happened that shows that 
these are delaying tactics to waste time. The first thing that has happened is that we have had talks of some people trying to interfere and tamper with the server. And one of the backbone of these talks is about the server. Because Raila has said that he just wants the whole world to know who won the elections. And he wants these servers to be opened. But then, it seems like the Kenya Kwanza team in cahoot with the Western, because the Western powers are the real machinations of the August elections. It seems they want to interfere with this server. People have told me on this channel that there is no way servers can be interfered with. Others are telling me that even if you interfere with the server, you cannot erase the footprints. I'm not an IT expert, but I'm going in on the discussion about an attempt to interfere with the server. Even if you are unable to interfere, the attempt shows the attitude that you do not want the truth to come out. And so I thought that they wanted Raila Muludinga to suspend the talk so that they can interfere with the server, then they call him later to accept the result on the server. And I've indicated for those who follow this channel that the day Raila will reject the result in the server, then these people will brand Raila Odinga as a man who does not want to accept defeat. It will sell to the whole world because here's Raila saying that he wants the servers to be opened. So the day will come when they have interfered with it, if at all it is not tamper-proof. Then they will call him, come gentlemen, here's the result. And they will open the server in the presence of all the IT guys from both sides. How will Raila deny the result? So that is the first thing that came out. The second thing that came up is the chest thumping that still continues from the side, one side of the Kenya Kwanza government. I have listened to Rigadi Geshego, the deputy president, with one narrative that Raila wants to get to the government through the back door, that he wants a handshake. But Raila has continued to say that he does not want to shake hands with this government. He wants the winner of the August elections to rule and he says that this matter will be put to rest once the servers are opened. But Rigedi Geshegwa still continues to say that Rail Udinga wants to anusumkate sort of. This is something that has really infuriated Raila and I think this is the reason why he's going to the streets. The other thing that I have listened to is the conditions of the hardliners. When they say, number one, you have to recognize that William Ruto is the president before we begin any talks. You know, it behoves one to ask, who requested the other for talks? Is it Raila who requested William Ruto that he wanted a meeting with him? Is it William Ruto who requested Raila to suspend the demonstration so that they can have a talk? William Ruto is the one who came to the screen first and asked, and for the first time he called him my brother Raila. I am requesting my brother Raila Mulodinga to stop the demonstrations and give dialogue a chance. That was William Samuel Ruto. Raila in his response said that in light of the request by his brother William Ruto to suspend the demonstrations for talks, to give dialogue a chance, he agreed. How then do you start giving conditions when you have requested your partner to suspend talks to give dialogue a chance? And you tell him, you must recognize that William Bruce is the president. And number two, you give conditions that the only thing that we are going to talk about is the issue of recruitment of the IEBC, IEBC commissioners. Yet really is saying that the high cost of living is on the table. Opening of the server is on the table. Cherera, reinstatement of Cherera team is on the table. If William Ruto's side was wise enough, they would have zipped their mouth and wait for Raila on the talks, then tell them, I want us to talk about this and this and this. Instead of making noise on the streets, because already the attitude, is, the attitude and the environment is polarized. They are going to the meetings 
with conditions. Rail has its conditions. William Ruto has these conditions. That simply means that it's a waste of time and these talks will not continue. And that is why I'm supporting what Dunstan Omar is saying. That is why I'm supporting Raila Mulodinga. I'm one person who believes that when you want us to talk, when you want peace, you must come with clean hands. You cannot come with, with a gun on one, on, on, on one hand, and on the other hand, you pretend that you are requesting for talks. This is something that cannot happen. And Raila Mulodinga seems to be determined that what he wants this time round, he must achieve. He had told of the, 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 the Delaware Senator Chris Coons that they have a right to demonstrate because it is entrenched in, in the Constitution. And he said that Coons didn't have a problem with it. So this time round, and William Ruto on his side, is hell-bent to ensure that he remains in power. So where does that lead us? People will go back to the streets, and we are going to lose billions. Remember the other day they said they could not pay civil servants because what they had collected was only sufficient to pay loans. So the ones that they collected was because of the peace that was reinstated when there was no demonstrations. Now when people go back to the demonstrations, even that little that they want to use to pay debts will not be there. And this is why I'm telling you that the Raila we are dealing with is not the one you saw in 2017. This is a different Raila. With the people like Mother Karua around him, and with supporters telling Raila, because supporters are telling Raila one message. We had moved on, and then you came to us that you know the result according to the whistleblower. You know the result according to, according to the ethical hacking that you did. And you came up that you won by 8 million against William Ruto's 5 million. And so you cannot take us back to the streets and go back again. You must go and get your victory. And that is where Raila is. Raila said the other day that their eyes are on the ball. The ball is the server. And Kenyans are saying, open this server. The other day, Okuro Court said, let us have a discussion without catching feelings. If the server is what will bring normalcy and convince Kenyans that it is really William really Ruto who won, let us open it. And more and more experts are being convinced that the only way to know the truth is to open the server. You've seen several groups and stakeholders coming and saying that we do not want meetings and talks between two parties, the Raila party and Ruto party, because matters that Raila is talking about are very pertinent. Food security, the high cost of living, electoral injustices. And they are saying stakeholders must be included so that we have a holistic discussion about our country. But remember, it started when Raila made a stand and remained steadfast that this time round he's not going to take anything. And so William Ruto must understand that he must also change tacts. Because if you thought that the same way they dealt with Raila in 2007 and in 2017 is the same way they are going to deal with him, then he's wrong. This is a different man altogether. He wants to prove a point that he's not a coward. He wants to prove a point that this time he's not going to let go his victory. I don't know what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Do you support Raila's rallying call to go back to the streets if things are not going to work? Please share with me in the comment section.